Hey, what's up, people? I'm Landon with LMR.com. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about several differences when it comes to the Generation 1 Coyote engine in both the 2011 to 2014 F-150, as well as the 2011 to 2014 Mustang GTs. Like any video, we got a lot of good stuff to cover in this one, so let's get rolling. All right, so here's the scoop. First, I'm gonna talk about the Coyote engine and the 2011 to 2014 Mustang GTs. I'll briefly touch base on the Roadrunner engine from the 2012 and 2013 Boss 302s, and I'll give you a brief rundown of the 2011 to 2014 F-150 Coyote engine. Throughout the video, you'll be able to take away from all of my talking points and have a better understanding of the main differences between the Coyote engines. We're going to kick things off by first talking about the Coyote engine that came equipped in the 2011 to 2014 Mustang GTs. Throughout this time frame, we witnessed a few subtle changes to the Coyote engine, and we even saw a special edition engine. So in late 2010, Ford fans could finally rejoice. The debut of the almighty Coyote engine in the 2011 Mustang GT that carried some classic nomenclature, the 5.0. Whenever the Coyote engine was released for the 2011 Mustang GT, it was rated at 412 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. It featured a cast aluminum block and, of course, cast aluminum cylinder heads. The cylinder heads were outfitted with dual overhead cams with four valves per cylinder. The intake valves measured 37 millimeters, or 1.456 inches, and the exhaust valves measured 31 millimeters, which is 1.220 inches. Now, one of the marketing tools for this engine was Ford's TIVCT, which stands for Twin Independent Variable Cam Timing. Now, Ford was no stranger to variable cam timing, as the outgoing 4.6-liter three valve engine in the Mustang had this technology as well as other Ford models and engines. This TIVCT was no doubt the Coyote's secret weapon for both power and efficiency. TIVCT allows the Ford calibration engineers to advance or retard timing for both the intake and exhaust cams independently. We won't go down the rabbit hole for twin independent variable camshaft timing, so simply put, this allows for improved power and torque, particularly at lower engine RPM, as well as improved fuel economy and reduced emissions. Both the intake and the exhaust camshafts share 12 millimeters of lift. The Gen 1 Coyote features a 3.63 inch bore, a 3.65 inch stroke, and for you metric folks out there, that's a 92.2 millimeter bore and a 92.7 millimeter stroke. Now I'm sure we all know the displacement for the Coyote. It's 302 cubic inches, which is technically 4.9 liters, but hey, we gotta call it a 5.0, right? The Mustang Coyote has a potent 11 to one compression ratio, oil squirters to help cool the pistons, and an eight quart oil pan. The short block consisted of a forged steel crankshaft, hyper eutect pistons with a short skirt and four valve reliefs, and forged powdered metal I-beam connecting rods. The Coyote engine had standard port style fuel injection and stainless steel tubular headers. The Mustang version of the Coyote had 560 thousandths thick oil pump gears. To top it all off, Ford did add some engine dress up elements for the Mustang GT's Coyote with a fancy intake manifold cover and powered by Ford coil covers. These items did not come equipped on the F-150 Coyote. The Coyote engine in the 2013 and 2014 Mustang GT's it didn't differ all that much from the 11 to 12 engines. Ford did remove the oil squirters and change the piston, which shared the same coating as the Boss 302 piston. This engine was rated at 420 horsepower versus the 411 in the 11 to 12 Coyote engine and still the same 390 pound-feet of torque at the crank. Now, it's never been nailed down where the extra eight horsepower comes from. I've read where both the piston coating and the removal of the oil squirters help with this. And again, I also read where Ford just simply recalibrated the PCM. Regardless, at the end of the day, it's eight horsepower. It's minuscule. For the most part, all the 11 to 14 Mustang GTs, they made comparable power with the same modifications. I don't know if it's true or not, but one little tidbit of information about the late production 2014 Mustangs is that they apparently received 2015 cylinder heads. Uh, this was mentioned back in the day on a few of the forums whenever enthusiasts were tearing into these cars, adding bolt-on go-fast goodies. So the special edition Coyote engine was codenamed the Roadrunner. This was the engine found in the 2012 and 2013 Boss 302 Mustangs. It was designed to be a high RPM, naturally aspirated powerhouse, and that it was. The Boss engine was a four to five version of the Coyote that features center forged connecting rods, CNC ported cylinder heads, and a boss specific short runner intake manifold. The Roadrunner also utilized different camshafts with 13 millimeters of lift and stiffer valve spring, which helped give the engine its high RPM capabilities. At the time, it became the highest horsepower naturally aspirated engine to roll off the Ford assembly line, cranking out 444 horsepower with a staggering 7,500 RPM redline. Think of the Roadrunner as the hypo version 
of the Coyote. You old school guys will appreciate that terminology. So this engine still had the 11 to one compression ratio. Of course, was rated at the 444 horsepower and 380 pound-feet of torque at the crank. Now the slight drop in torque over the Mustang's 390 pound-feet of torque was because of the short runner intake manifold. All right, so last but not least, the Coyote engine in the 2011 through 2014 F-150. So no doubt about it, Ford kept it pretty simple with the F-150's version of the Coyote engine. All the hardcore information listed previously about the Mustang GT, most of it remains the same, even the firing order, which is 154-86-372. Unlike the removal of the oil squirters in the Mustang, all the 11 to 14 F-150s had oil squirters. The intake manifold was designed for its intended purpose or application, which in this case being a truck, it favors torque rather than peak power. The F-150 Coyote had a 10 and a half to one compression ratio versus the 11 to one found in the Mustang, and it was rated at 360 horsepower and 380 pound-feet of torque at the crank. It had an 80 millimeter throttle body, which is the same as the Mustang GT, and the F-150 also featured different intake cams. The F-150 utilized a 7.7 quart oil pan, and it did have a frontward facing oil cooler. The oil pump gears in the F-150 Coyote were also smaller or thinner, 510 thousandths to be exact, so that's 50 thousandths thinner than the oil pump gears in the Mustang. The timing cover and a few accessory drive components were also different on the F-150 engine, which included a tensioner for the AC belt and a three bolt water pump pull. Lastly, this engine was equipped with log style cast iron exhaust manifolds versus the stainless steel tubular headers found on the Mustang Coyote. So wrapping everything up here, guys, there really isn't much difference between the first generation Coyote engine and the Mustang and the F-150. Both engines are good candidates for engine swaps, with the F-150 being significantly cheaper, obviously because of availability. Ford builds more F-150s than they do Mustangs. Like any engine that is mass produced, the first gen Coyote it had its fair share of problems, but hey, at the end of the day, they're still pretty darn reliable. That'll do it for this video. If you value the information we provided, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one, and be sure you turn on notifications, that way you don't miss future uploads. Until next time, for all things 1979 to present Mustang, and of course, SBT Lightning, keep it right here with the real enthusiasts, LMR.com.